What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding and today will be an arm workout. And before I say anything else, I'm very much aware that most people don't have access to an actual fully equipped gym, but I'm also aware that a lot of people are now at home and uh, perform their home workouts, but also don't have much else to do and a lot of people like to watch YouTube so I still want to provide a lot of content next to my full days of eating and the Q&A's I will also be simply posting my workouts that I do to prepare for the Mr. Olympia hopefully still this year and I actually doubt that the Mr. Olympia will be at the same date which would be which would be September 11 actually for a classic physique class so I think it will be postponed that's my hunch but who knows what will happen but uh, yeah I'm still going to show you guys the workout so you can write down uh, some tips and tricks that I uh, try to mention and you might want to try them out after you're able to still train in the gym but anyway guys this is the arm workout i'm starting out with the triceps so i first started out with the rope tricep push down because that warms up the elbows but this time i decided to do a superset to warm the entire triceps up even more so at the rope push down you work the small head of the tricep a bit more and on this one the underhand tricep push down you work the medial and the long head just a bit more of course it's just a small emphasis you don't isolate any head of the triceps whenever you use your triceps you always use three heads you, you can't possibly isolate one of them but you can hit them from different angles and when you do that you can develop them in different ways because if you only did the rope push down you might only have developed you know a more developed small head and the long head would look underdeveloped compared to it but it would still make some gains but if you only stick to that exercise it won't look balanced so you have to stick to other exercises as well and I really love this underhand uh, push down, especially with the handle I'm using right here, because it feels natural. The wrist isn't, you know, normally, some people like to use a straight bar with the underhand push down, but to me, that really hurts. The wrists puts an unnatural pressure on the wrist, and I don't like that, because uh, it doesn't allow me to focus on only the movement, but also, you know, distracts me because of the pain in the wrists. So I love a handle that has an angle in the handle like that all right this I think is going to be the last set of this one so hitting uh, I believe 10 reps on this rope push down here and as you can see I'm going all the way up a little higher than 90 degrees to make sure that the tricep is stretching and then I'm trying to go all the way down contracting the tricep and when you, when you see those last few reps here my hands are staying closer together just a little bit so I'm able to go through the full range of motion instead of uh, ending up short and I always believe a full range of motion is very important now the stack I'm using right here goes to 92 kilograms to be exact and in most gyms you might wonder why does that feel lighter than a lat pull down with 90 kilograms for example here you're able to do a, a push down with your triceps with over 90 kilos and that happens pretty easily and when you then do um, a lat pull down it's much more difficult and that's because of the way that this uh, steel wire is wired through the pulleys because here you have two different pulleys and that makes the weight twice as light so if you guys ever think you're actually lifting that amount of weight with your muscles the muscles only experience half of the weight because of the pulleys and the leverage is then made much easier all right this is going to be the next exercise the close grip bench press i used to do the close grip bench press wrong because i actually put my wrists uh, all the way together when I was more flexible in the past too and less muscled so it was a little easier to do that but it's very bad for the stress on the wrists even in this position when I go all the way down you can see that there's an unnatural angle 
when you look at my forearms and my wrists, it kind of starts to, you know, torque the wrong way. Just imagine if you put your wrists uh, together all the way, the tension will be even more severe in between the forearms and the wrist. You don't want that. So you want to put them apart a little bit more, like two or three fists in between your grip. And that way you can actually really still contract the triceps really easily without um, using the chest too much. Obviously, since it's a compound exercise and not an isolation movement, like for example the rope pushdown, you will use multiple muscles, you still use the chest, you still use the shoulders, but you mostly use the triceps. And one of the reasons why I like doing this exercise after already having done a couple of tricep exercises before is because of the pre-exhaustion that has already occurred. So the triceps already are tired from the previous volume that I did. So the weak point in the chain during this movement will be for sure the triceps. So for some people who have uh, you know, a weak chest and strong triceps on an exercise like this, the chest might actually be the weak point and that won't allow you to reap the full benefits of this exercise for the triceps, which is exactly what we are doing it for. Uh, also, as you can see, I'm wearing elbow sleeves and they protect my elbows. They keep them warm. They, uh, you know, put some pressure around the joint, keeping it more tight. And that, uh, you know, prevents basically the pain from getting too severe when doing any exercises that are quite heavy for the triceps. A lot of people have this problem. So I really advise you guys to get some elbow sleeves of a good brand that are tight enough around your elbows uh, to keep them warm and warm up with plenty of exercises like the rope push down. Now, when you hit a close grip bench press and you start hitting weights that are quite heavy, make sure to have a spotter. And right here, this spotter is of course my girlfriend helping me. And what I personally find important during this exercise is go down nice and slow until you feel a good stretch in the triceps and then going up as explosively as you can. But obviously the last few reps, it's impossible to go up that fast because you pretty much hit failure, which is why you do need a spotter during the last set. And this is becoming one of my favorite exercises for the triceps, the overhead cable tricep extension. And yes, I've mentioned uh, multiple times throughout the years what my favorite exercises are. And they do change from time to time because if you do an exercise for very long and sometimes you hit a plateau on the exercise, you want to switch up exercises and sometimes you, f you find out about different exercises that feel quite good to you. So this one feels pretty amazing. It really stretches the long head and it keeps constant tension on the triceps because it's, at the, it's attached to a cable. So when I go all the way up, I do try to contract consciously with the tricep as well, because if you don't, the pressure might be uh, on your joints instead of the muscle. So when you're going all the way up, don't just rest for a second, but actually contract the muscle consciously and if you look closely at the tricep you can see that the contraction remains solid right there and that is important because time under tension is a very big factor in muscle growth the longer you can keep tension on the muscle throughout the set the better it'll be for muscle growth so just keep it in mind if you ever want to do an exercise and you go all the way up and you rest at the top, the tension is lost. And if you lose the tension, you lose potential to build more muscle. And that's not what we want. So right here I'm using kind of an underhand grip like you would if you would hold uh, a big dumbbell with two hands at the same time. That's also an exercise, the overhead dumbbell extension with two arms. You pretty much have your hand in the same positioning, but this allows you uh, to hold your hand like this uniquely with this cable. And of course, this is my girlfriend still working out while she is, uh, in this video, 19 weeks pregnant, which is pretty amazing. So, so I'm uh, pretty proud of her that she still works out and uh, it motivates me in turn to not only have to work out alone, but also with someone like my girlfriend. Anyway, the overhead cable tricep extension, this will be the last set. The triceps have been 
studied in literature what they respond best to and it actually is to a lot of heavy weights as well so i always like to combine heavy weights with volume especially for the triceps so i first did a lot of volume to really get the blood flowing in there get some metabolic damage going get a pump going and then i want to do at least one exercise in the workout that is quite heavy around the six rep mark until you hit failure because that brings more tension to the muscle fibers and in turn causes growth uh, most efficiently for certain muscle groups like the triceps. So definitely combine volume with weight, but only if you can do it safely and you've warmed up properly. All right, the next exercise is going to be the alternating dumbbell curls. And throughout the years, I have been doing these on and off. Sometimes I really like them, sometimes I don't really feel them, but now that I've changed my form just a little bit on these i really start to fall in love with them once again um you know for me doing it uni i mean alternating isn't always beneficial because you know your bicep is resting and the tension is lost throughout you know the set every time you hit a rep then the other arm hits a rep and while the other arm hits a rep your other arm you know is resting so that is the only disadvantage here the advantage however is that you then are able to do more reps in total because of the resting factor but what i wanted to say about the form which you can see better here is that when you go upwards with the dumbbell when you curl up the upper arm so not just the lower arm but also the upper arm goes up a little bit because that enhances the contraction of the bicep a lot of people like to dig their elbows in their side and then do very strict dumbbell curls but you kind of then neglect a part of the contraction you can achieve if you do it uh, with a full range of motion like i'm doing here so when you go all the way up you actually want to use your upper arm as well to go up slightly so you might feel your shoulders a little bit but in a controlled fashion to be able to contract the bicep even harder and that to me uh transformed this exercise once more because first i you know i got uh for the half of the range of motion i got a good feeling but for the other half the tension was lost but because i'm now able to achieve a larger range of motion i can feel a lot more blood flow and a lot more tension in that muscle and when i look at exercises from the 70s for example this is one of them that was used quite a lot also by Arnold, who said this was pretty much his favorite bicep exercise where he got the best possible contraction. And you can definitely feel the truth of that when you perform it like this. And now I want to uh, tell you to watch closely to what I'm doing right now. So I pretty much hit failure, but now I'm changing the way I'm gripping the dumbbell to so be able to go past failure again. So if you look when I'm curling up, the dumbbell that is sticking outwards to the side, uh, I'm holding the dumbbell closer to the middle, allowing the side of the dumbbell to fall to the outside, making it easier to do the curls. And if that was too difficult to understand, no worries, I will do a separate video about that one, how to go past failure on these dumbbell curls. Now, this is an exercise that I really like, especially if you are a competitive bodybuilder. It has two uses in one. So first, of course, you're working the biceps unilaterally, might I add, which is also good for fixing imbalances, which is why I'm starting with the left side, which to me is a little bit smaller than the right side. But on top of that, you can mimic the front double bicep or the back double bicep. Yes, I'm using one arm at the same time, but I am contracting the back and I am positioning my body in such a way that I would hit that pose in a correct manner. So if you look from the front or from the back, the side of my body that is doing the exercise is in a position that I would be in if I would hit the pose. And that is an indirect way of practicing that pose. Normally, it will be even more efficient if you use, of course, both arms at the same time. But in this particular setup, 
uh, it's too short for me, so I'm too tall for uh, full range of motion with both, both arms at the same time because it would simply hit the stack and that is not what we want because then you lose tension. So here what I'm really focusing on is not the amount of weight but I'm really focusing on the contraction of the biceps. And if you look closely and it's uh, not exaggerated but it's just there a little bit just like with the alternating dumbbell curls my upper arm is going up just a little bit to enhance a contraction uh, at, uh, at the contraction point so I'm stretching all the way but when I'm going back to contract my upper arm is going up a little bit making the contraction even more severe and trust me when you try it out you will know exactly what I mean so what you really want to do here is constant tension don't stretch and overextend the bicep I used to do that a lot because of course during you know the first years that I was a competitive bodybuilder I really was all about full range of motion to the extreme where I wanted to stretch out every single muscle to the extreme but that actually caused my left bicep tendon to become inflamed because if you always overextend every single muscle it'll put not just pressure on the muscle itself and not just stress there but also on the tendon that the muscle is attached to so if you feel any pain in a muscle group when you do full range of motion it's probably because you overextend the arm or overstretch the muscle and then the tendon becomes inflamed if you do it week after week day after day so you might want to actually shorten the range of motion for a while and you know evade the pain and that's the only way to fix something like that and then this will be the last bicep exercise also at the same time for the forearms the reverse easy curl bar or reverse easy bar curls so I'm hitting 15 to 20 reps here you don't want to go way too heavy here because if you do uh, you simply won't be able to hit quality reps what you want to do here especially at the end of the workout is go up to about 90 degrees maybe a little bit higher and make sure to really feel the forearms working as well and the biceps will stretch out very nicely at the bottom automatically because of the reverse grip on this barbell and it feels pretty amazing to be sure so it not only works the biceps but also the top of the forearms which everybody wants to have since seeing Phil Heath alrighty guys we are back home now from a pretty awesome arm workout I had my Way Islet Gladiator Pro shake around 50 grams of it and now I'm back home and I'm making the meal so let's check it out what we have right here and some hake fillet yes it's not the most lean fish uh, ideally someone who has trouble uh, digesting food would take like a cod fillet or some chicken post-workout but I like this because it digests really easily for me plus it's extra healthy omega-3 calories and then what we also have is actually this some rice this is 170 grams of uncooked rice uh, translated to about 550 grams of cooked rice I'm going to put this uh, already done as you can see I'm going to put this in a the microwave then combine it with this and then enjoy that meal as a post-workout recovery meal now the benefit of this hake fillet is that it has a skin so you can actually bake it uh, on the skin and then later on turn it over and it will be done within a minute so that's perfect this is, by the way, around 280 grams of fish. Very delicious and very healthy. Okay, guys, this is the final result. As you can see, the rice is the turmeric rice fused with the ginger. Fresh ginger and turmeric, always the best choice. If you can't get those, get the powdered version in the supermarket. And uh, we also have the hake fillet here. Three fillets, total about 280 grams. And also in this rice, 10 milliliters of oil also even in the post rocket meal so this is quite a lot of calories as well and on top of this we will have a kiwi with the skin on always take out the hard pieces so you can actually eat it but that's going to help with digestion and immune system actually because there's vitamin c in here fibers and it'll help with protein absorbability as well because there's a digestive enzyme anyway let's enjoy this post-workout meal 
Right, guys, that was the workout of the day. I'll, of course, be posting more banded workout as well. And for people who have some dumbbells or maybe a barbell at home, I'll also be doing some workouts with those sooner than later. A lot more content is coming. And if you want to see anything in particular, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to do my best to upload that to this channel. Anyway, guys, I really want to thank you a lot for the incredible golden support. Stay healthy and stay golden.